Now I'll explore opportunities management using Luxor CRM. Opportunities start with a lead, and when you're ready to turn that lead into an opportunity, you click Add Opportunity. And as that opportunity is being created, behind the scenes, the lead is converted either into a contact or an organization, depending on the business design. If you're B2B, the lead will be transformed into an organization since you're selling to companies and not individual people. That organization will have a primary contact associated with it, and you can also add as many different contacts at that organization as you want. If you're B2C, the lead will be converted into a contact. Luxor allows for both B2B, B2C, and mixed modes, so you can set that up under Admin under Company Info. Here we're relating the item to Smart Manufacturing, which is the organization, so we're doing a B2B model. Tracking groups define your different sales processes. You might have many different tracking groups and they have different process flows through their individual sales cycle. You can set up as many different ones as you want under the admin section, which we'll take a look at later. For example, if I have new business, my stages will be different. I have a qualified meeting requirements, etc., all the way down to closed and lost. But if I'm selling to existing customers, my sales cycle is different. I don't need to qualify them or meet them. You can set up as many different tracking groups as you want and define the individual stages within them. All this is very customizable and you set all that up yourself. Let's call this opportunity test. You can forecast a closing amount and date. And you can set it up so that when you go to a certain stage, users will see a pop-up and they have to fill that out before they can advance to that stage. That pop-up might have questions they have to answer or information they have to fill out. So let's go to requirements. So as we see, there's a few questions I have to answer before I can advance this opportunity to the qualified stage. So we'll just answer yes, yes. Once you save the record, the stage is recorded in stage history with the date, time, and user stamp. The advancement of a stage can also trigger an alert, which we'll cover later. Anything you do with an opportunity will automatically roll up to the organization or contact, depending on if it's B2B or B2C. Down here, we can see all the related items, such as appointments, to-dos, etc. You can see all your contacts at the organization. And you can see if the contact is your primary contact or not. In this case, Carolyn Brown is not our primary contact. You may have attachments, such as invoices. If the company sells something like widgets, you might put that under products, etc. Now we'll take a look at views. As with all the other modules, you can build as many different views for yourself as you like. Let's build a new view to see all the opportunities that are currently open. I'll name this Open Opportunities. Over here, I can select all the fields I want to see in this view. So I want to filter by status being open. So this will show me all the opportunities where the current status is open. You can further filter by other criteria. For example, maybe I just want to see all the ones that are worth over a thousand dollars that are still open that are in the area of Toronto. You can search as many different fields as you want. So we'll save and view this. So here is the view that we just built ourselves. It acts sort of as a report to show you all the open opportunities. And speaking of reports, let's take a look at those quickly. We have many different reports for all the modules. Under Opportunities Report, we have a new one called Intelligent Forecast, which is really interesting, so I'll quickly show you it. For Tracking Group, let's do New Business.
The intelligent forecasting shows you all the number of opportunities that have reached all the stages of the sales cycle and how many were closed from those stages. So when you're setting up the probabilities for each stage like we did earlier, these are based on real-time data. There's no guesswork. And it also shows you the average days to closing of different employees. This report is really helpful and useful because it gives you real-time data into what's happening in your sales pipeline. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's go to the admin section and take a look at tracking groups. This is where you define the number of sales cycles and the stages within the sales cycles. This is where you manage your different tracking groups. You can add new ones, edit them by going to open cycle and remove them. For each tracking group, you can decide what to apply it to, whether it's all or just leads or just organizations and contacts. And the business type you can edit if it's B2B, B2C, or both. And we talked about earlier, you would set that up under admin, under company information. So let's go to open cycle and see how we would edit the different stages. Here you can add, edit, and remove stages. You can move them up and down using the arrows. You can specify if the stage is required. So if I want to go from requirements to follow up, I need to complete the quotation stage. The associated percentage is the probability of closing at that stage, and you can specify whether that's locked or whether you leave it open. If it's left open, the percentage is just a suggestion, but the user can edit it themselves. And over here, you can add questions. Earlier, when I went through the qualified stage, you saw how the pop-up came up, and I had to answer these questions before I could close that stage. So this is where you would add the questions. To make further edits, we would go to details. Security groups is where you would control who can actually advance to this stage. Since Liz Henry created the opportunity, she will be in the permitted security group for all of the stages, but at certain stages you might want to allow other people to do the advancement, so you would just add them here. Earlier I had mentioned that the advancement to a stage can trigger an alert, and where you would set that up is over here under Add Email Template. You give your template name, description, subject, and you might want to attach an attachment. The target users and groups are the people who will be alerted to it. These are the people who will receive the email when the stage is advanced. Down here is where you create the message. This is very similar to creating a newsletter. You can do it either in plain text or HTML. And there's the insert fields. So that's how you set up an alert. The last thing under sales cycle details is stage fields. This is where you can specify fields that have to be filled out before the stage can be advanced. You can pick as many as you want and click add. And what will happen is before they can advance the stage, a pop-up will show up making sure they filled out this information. So that's what we have under sales cycle details. That was a brief overview of the different features we have for opportunities management in Luxor CRM. To learn more, please contact us today for a personalized product demonstration.